Welcome. Let's look at a famous EOQ solution for sourcing, batching, and inventory management. What is this EOQ and how can you use it? Imagine you manage a supermarket. An important part of your job would be to manage its inventory. Here's the actual inventory recorded daily from a supermarket in Shanghai. The graph shows the number of individual 150 grams Colgate toothpaste and their inventory follows a triangular pattern. I want you to focus on two points. First, the inventory shoots up when the order receives a replenishment order. Notice that the order of a batch size is about 50. The EOQ model prescribes the optimal quantity Q. To explain that model, consider the second point. There are about 12 replenishments in two years, which means that the order frequency is six times per year. To figure out the optimal order quantity, we must build a model of reality. The key assumption, which significantly simplifies this model, is that the demand rate for your product is constant and perfectly known. This means that the EOQ model only applies to mature products with stable demand. With a constant demand rate of about 300 and a reorder quantity of 50, the inventory shoots up by 50 when an order is received and depletes at a constant rate of about 300 per year. And we indeed get a perfect triangular inventory pattern, similar to the real data. The order frequency is six per year and the average cycle inventory is half the height of the triangles, or 25. Now that we have a model, we can repeat the calculations to understand what would happen if we change the order quantity. You can easily construct this table by hand or in Excel. Notice the two extremes. An order quantity of one means that you reorder after each sale almost a perfect just-in-time pull system. The benefit is that you have at most one unit in inventory, but the downside is that you must place, transport, and receive 300 orders per year. On the other extreme, if you place an order of 300, you order only once per year. That may be beneficial, but it does lead to a huge inventory starting at 300 and taking a year to consume. By changing the order quantity Q, we see two conflicted forces at play. A high batch size requires a lower frequency. That reduces your cost of placing an order, transporting it, and receiving it. But it also costs more inventory. The EOQ solution finds the economically optimal trade-off. To find that trade-off, we must put both curves in monetary units. So that's the last step. In addition to the demand rate or the throughput, denoted by the input variable R, the EOQ model requires two monetary conversion factors. H is the holding cost you incur to hold one more unit in inventory. And S is the fixed cost you incur whenever you place, transport, or receive an order. With the two monetary conversion factors, we can monetize the annual setup and the annual inventory holding cost and compute their total cost curve. Using calculus, we know that the total cost has a unique minimum and that is exactly the famous EOQ solution. The key insight is that both the optimal quantity and the optimal total cost scale with the square root of the demand and thus companies should also scale their order frequency with the square root of the demand. Finally, using this optimal prescription, we can backtrack the monetary fraction S over H from the supermarket data, if we assume that the supermarket is a rational optimizer. If you want to see more videos like this and support this channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell, so you'll get a notification whenever I publish new content like this. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again.